Keep it clean with Energine. You can get nothing at any price that will clean grease spots from your clothing, rugs, fabric-covered chairs faster or better than Energine cleaning fluid. Just follow directions and it cleans even delicate laces and velvets without leaving telltale rings. Get Energine at drug, grocery, or variety stores. From Hollywood, we present... Bride and Groom. With your Master of Ceremonies, John Nelson. Thank you very much. Thank you and good afternoon. In almost any romance, the first step is boy meets girl. But we've discovered here at our bride and groom wedding party at the Chapman Park Hotel on Broadwilshire Boulevard that it sometimes takes a bit of doing for a young man to meet a pretty girl. Today, we'll meet a young man from Washington State who wanted to get acquainted with a pretty minister's daughter from Texas. From them, we'll hear the story of how they met and fell in love, and that will be just before they go out down the tree-lined path to be married in the quiet of the beautiful old chapel by their clergyman. And first, as always... We'll have a few words from Jack McElroy. If dandruff is spoiling the appearance of your hair, and you've been trying to combat it with little or no success, listen carefully. Many outstanding authorities say that the most common kind of dandruff is not a natural condition, but it actually is caused by a germ called Pterospolum ovo. And the truth is that most dandruff combating methods are no more effective for fighting this germ than plain water and brushing. For like water, all they do is remove loose dandruff. They have no effect whatever on the germ, and to get real relief, it must be destroyed. Double dandarine really works, because double dandarine does just that. It actually kills this germ on contact. Even in many severe cases, results with double dandarine have been remarkable. Now, the amazing effectiveness of double dandarine is due to a special ingredient, an active antiseptic so wonderfully efficient, many hospitals use it. In double dandarine, we call it Alzan. So try double dandarine and see if you don't agree that most other methods can't compare with its dandruff-combating effectiveness. If you're not completely satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Get double dandarine today. Here comes the bride. Very charming young couple. I'd like to introduce them to you. Our bride is Miss Edna Campbell. Her groom is Mr. L. Roy Ray. L. Ray Stansel. Stansel, is that right? Stansel, that's right. What does the L stand for? That stands for Lauren. It's a Canadian name. Do you like the name Lauren? No, I don't. I'd have to... I'd have to... They'd ask me what my name was. I'd say Lauren Ray. They'd say, how do you spell it? L-R-A-I-N-E? Lorraine? No, I said it's pronounced Lauren. I'd have to go ahead and tell them every one. I just got tired, so I just dropped in and go by Ray. That's right. It's much simpler. You bet it's simpler. I, I, I've noticed that every time I meet somebody with a name like J. Cheever Loophole or something like that, or I something or other, it usually is because they're trying to forget a name. If you had a boy, would you name him? I'd uh, name him anything but Lauren, I believe. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> well, speaking of names, what, what are the pet names you have for him, Edna? Well, I call him a lot of things, but Raymond. Raymond is my... Pet name. Mm-hmm. What are some of the other things? You said you call them a lot of things. Like <laughs> well, you sweetheart know. or honey. Yes. Or like, Once no. in a while, she says that. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough of that. Let's get acquainted, if you will, please, Edna. Some of the things about you, your age, where you were born and so on. I'm 23 and I was born in Cisco, Texas. I'm one of five children. One of five in your family. Boys yes. or girls? Three and uh, four girls and one boy. Mm-hmm. You weren't quite sure for a moment, though. <laughs> I was leaving me out. Yes. <laughs> Well, don't do that. And uh, did you live in Texas? Live in Texas, in Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Kansas. You got around. What did your father do? Minister. Oh, I, I remember you with us. And uh, were they able to be here today? No. I'm sorry, but they're probably listening. Yes. Um, did you work? I'm working. You're going to continue to work? Yes, sir. About a year. Just about a year? Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, Ray, if you will, please. A little bit about you. Well, I was uh, born in Seattle, Washington. And uh, I came to Oklahoma City when I was 20, uh, when I was two years old. I'm 26 now. I lived in Oklahoma City 24 years. And I work on the job training for my dad in the machine shop. Mm hmm. And. Uh, Did you go to school in Oklahoma City? Well, I went one uh, year at uh, OCU and one year down at Oklahoma University. It's oh. a state school. Mm hmm. Norman there in Oklahoma. I see. You were in service, then? Yes, I was in Coast Guard for nearly four years. I see. I, okay. was, a, I was a stew burner, a cook. And boy, they really loved it. <laughs> really did some good job. Good. Well, that's handy. Did you, uh, can you cook, Edna? Well, not very well. You're going to I, teach I'm you? going to teach her. Good. Yes. <laughs> settles one domestic problem. Tell me, if you will, please, how many brothers and sisters in your family? Uh, just four of us. My sister and myself. And she's a matron of honor today, my sister. Graham. Is she married? Oh, yes, yes. matron of honor. She yes. would be, wouldn't she? Yes, they? she's from New York. Your family here? Yes, they're here. I'm glad. Do they uh, know your bride? Yes, they know her. Approve? Well, I, I think so. They should. They said they did, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't question them. Uh, anyway, the thing that we're all interested in, as you know, in just a few moments... You close the book on one chapter of your love story and begin a wonderful new life together. And we'd just sort of like to hear as much as you'd like to tell us of it from the very beginning. Who's going to start off? Well, I guess I'll start it off here and I'll get stuck while I let her help me out here a little. Yes, go ahead. This, this story started on a Sunday night, November 10th of last year. I, uh, for about a year, I've been bowling a little. Kind of like it and trying to learn. So I decided I'd go bowling this Sunday night and, of course, look around and... See what I can see. There's interesting. <laughs> so I went to the Playmore Bowling Alley. It's a bowling alley in the heart of Oklahoma City. And I glanced at... It's upstairs, and I got at the head of the landing. I glanced around to see what, what I could see that would be interesting to the eyes and help me out a little where it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt my eyes. See something <laughs> soothing. So I glanced over at Alley 12. It was to the north of the alley. And I, saw, I noticed one girl in particular there. She was uh, bowling with a, another girl, her girlfriend. And I says, hmm, that sure looks like a cute-looking skirt over there. I'm going over and see if I can't get acquainted with that. <laughs> so I went over there and hinted around that I'd like to bowl, but I says, the, the tenant in charge says the alleys are all filled up, and you'd have to wait maybe an hour. So I says, went over and talking to him and told him the situation I was in, and you think she would invite me to bowl? No, it had to be her girlfriend to say, well, would you like to bowl with us? Wait a minute now. You mean that you, you lured the attendant over there and made a great big conversation so they could hear you, and then you didn't even take the hint? No. No! <laughs> but her girlfriend did. Yes, yeah, she was kind enough to say, well, would you like to bowl with us? And so Of course, I said yes. And so you bowled? So I, I went over and told him that, uh, that the girls talked me into bowling with them, that I'd bowl be out on Alley 12. <laughs> and? So I went back. I had my own shoes. As you know, you're familiar with bowling. You have your, your own shoes. You get your name on the heel mm -hmm. so you can tell them apart from the other mm -hmm. shoes. So they says, what uh, name shall we put on the... What is your mother... I think you said, what did your mother call you, didn't you? Yes. And I says, here. And put, stuck my heel up so she'd get the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly an informal way to be introduced. <laughs> but anyway, so you bowled. Did you have a nice time bowling with the girls? Yes, I did. Did I, you get acquainted uh, with them a little bit? Well, I tried to. She said I put her arm around her that night. I don't remember. I might have, might have put her arm around he it. He did. He, he did? put his arm around me. <laughs> hmm. She said she didn't, she said she didn't like it, but I, I, I kind of think she wanted to be there. She said if it wasn't people watching, she'd have put my arm uh, down. But I, <laughs> well, you see how you can get yourself into an awful mess of trouble just by putting your arm around a girl. This thing is going a long way. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we bowled a game and, and, uh, Put my street shoes on and leaving, leaving, I says, uh, you have anything planned for the rest of the evening? She says, no. She says, I'm a working girl. I'm tired. And she says, I'm going on home. I says, would you like to go dancing or somewhere? She says, oh, I don't believe so. Not tonight. So I says, well, I'll take you home then if you don't mind. And I don't know. She didn't say much. I didn't know whether she's going to let me to or not. But we got downstairs and I says, my car is this way. And she says, well, we're going to walk this way. And I says, well, I'll, I'll take you. And she says, I only live about three blocks. She so lived in an apartment about three blocks from where the bowling alley was. So I finally talked her into going dancing. So she says, well, I have to go home and change clothes. So I waited for her, and we went, went dancing that evening. Hmm. And, uh, That's quite a change, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, I don't mean to be sort of, you know, questioning. I just wonder what happened to the girlfriend. 
Well, we left her at the, at the apartment. She was my she roommate. She was, she, was she was your roommate. She was your roommate. She was the one who was nice to you, so you wanted yes, to take another girlfriend. She was, she was nice. <laughs> Are you two still friends now, Edna? Yes. Well, I'm glad. Tell me, uh, you, you went dancing, had a nice time. Yes, Did you sir. begin to like Ray that night? Not much. No. no. Ray? Well, I thought she was kind of cute, kind of mm-hmm. nice, but mm-hmm. I wasn't getting all excited about her the no. first night. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> when was your second date? Wednesday night following. Sunday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. and then when was your third date? Saturday night. When did you two start going steady? Oh, in about a couple months. You went along like that three times a week for a couple of months, and then it got steady. <laughs> I see. We weren't going steady at first. We only had about four dates a week at first. We weren't going steady then. About two months, we then we saw each other every night. And we started going steady then. I asked her if she'd like to. Mm-hmm. I see. Tell me, if you will, Edna, which, uh, on which date did Ray first try to kiss you? On the first night. He tried. <laughs> How did you make up? We were, we were sitting in the car in front of our apartment, and we talked about 15 minutes, so I s- said to myself, well, I'm going to see if I can't get a little kiss here before I take her in. So I, I reached over and, and kissed her, and just like kissing a dead fish, I told her. <laughs> I think we better leave that subject alone, too. <laughs> well, now, how long have you gone with Ray... Edna, when you realized that you were falling in love with him? About three months. That long? And how could you tell? I mean, what were all the symptoms? What did it feel like to you? Well, I'd rather go with him than anyone else. You and just I was missed... eager to get mm-hmm. his call. And... Mm-hmm. With... Just... and it's about the same, Ray? Yes, if I'd miss one night seeing her, it seemed like it'd be a week before I get to see her again. That's a pretty good sign. Because <laughs> you're going to see an awful lot of each other from now on, and it's wonderful to have that eagerness. How long had you gone together when Ray proposed to you? She can't, the bride is a little speechless at the moment. Oh, uh, we was, uh, we, about four months, I think. I proposed to her April the 9th, the night I gave her engagement ring. Mm-hmm. Where were you? What were you doing? Uh, we were sitting on a divan with soft music playing in her apartment. You had your arm around her? Uh, naturally. Yes! <laughs> I'll, I'll let, I'll let her tell you what I, what I said. Did, did you put your, have both arms around her? No, I had just one arm. Oh, the other, other arm, the other hand, I reached and got the oh, ring. I see. Just, just wondering what was going on. And honey, what did he say? He says, will you marry me for better, for worse? I said something else. Don't you remember? I said, darling, I love you. Will you marry me? Mm -hmm. Yes. You said, darling, I love you. Will you marry me for better or for worse? And you said... I said, that isn't very original, but but I'll accept. He asked the right question. He got the right answer. (laughs) This is the first time one of our grooms has given the bride a choice, though, when he proposed to her. To marry him for better or for worse. <laughs> we have for the bride her beautiful bouquet. It's a beautiful round shower arrangement of white carnations and maiden hair fern tied with a white satin bow. Inserted corsage of three large mystery gardenias. A maid of honor bouquet is made especially to match her costume. An arm arrangement of delicate pink peonies tied with matching satin ribbon. All designed, of course, by Mr. John Patrick Burke, our famous floral artist of Beverly Hills. And very beautiful as all of Mr. Burke's art. You are... I'm Mrs. Ethel Hendrickson. Oh, you're the sister. <clears throat> sister of the groom. Mm-hmm. How long have you been married? One year. Ooh, good. Did you encourage the, this pair? <laughs> well, I've been living in New York City, but I've just heard about it through letters. Mm. So I met the uh, bride-to-be for the first time she's coming very, out here. She's and I, very lovely, isn't she? She certainly is. I think your brother made a wise choice. You, sir? I'm Wayne Reeves. Mm, proud father. That's right. I remember, yes. When? when? Yesterday morning. Good. All right. <laughs> Hope you do as well as the best man. Well, maybe that's why he's called it. We have for the best man the bride's wedding ring, selected as always from Brock and Company of Beverly Hills in Los Angeles, one of the truly great names in jewelry. As you'll see, it is a very lovely diamond band. Flip that in your pocket. Edna, do you have on something old? Yes. And new? Yes. And borrowed? Yes. And blue? No. No blue? <laughs> I happen to know that people from Oklahoma do things in a big way, so I have a blue garter for the bride. <laughs> Honey, you take this, and you slip behind us, and you put it on. If you would. Just turn around this way, fellas. Yes. <laughs> Ready? Yes. <laughs> Ready? Do you have a penny in your shoe? Yes. And the name of your love song. If, if you, you were, were the only girl. girl. Good. That's 
Right now is our bride and groom in the wedding party. Go down the aisle, out through the lovely gardens of the Chapman Park Hotel at the Old World Chapel. Where the clergyman waits. Jack McElroy sings their love song. If you were the only girl in the world And I were the only boy Nothing else would matter in the world today We could go on loving in the same old way The garden of Eden Just made for two With nothing to mar our joy I would say such wonderful things to you There would be such wonderful things to do If you were the only girl in the world And I were the only Each day they're different, and each day they're cute, and each day they're wonderfully enthusiastic, and each day they're so much in love that, I don't know, just some sort of special. Well, it's enough for me for a moment, because here are some real words of wisdom from someone who really knows. One of the most tragic things about hair that lacks luster, hair that's not delightfully fragrant, is that so many women have this social or business handicap. So don't take chances. Start today to give your hair a once-a-week washing with mulsified coconut oil shampoo. You'll quickly see why smart women everywhere will use nothing but mulsified shampoo. It's totally different from so many soaps that leave your hair wearing an unattractive coat of afterfilm. For it rinses out readily and thus gives your hair a lustrous sheen and a fragrant freshness that adds to your beauty and charm. Moreover, mulsified shampoo not only beautifies, but protects as well, for it removes loose dandruff instantly and contains none of the harmful free alkalis often present in ordinary soaps. Its rich, creamy lather is so mild, so gentle, you can use this shampoo as much as you want without harm. And it's a shampoo you'll enjoy using too. For it foams fast, lathers freely, and cleanses oiliness without tiresome rubbing. So get the big bottle at any toilet goods counter. It gives you more, saves you money, lasts for months. Ask for emulsified coconut oil shampoo today. Thank you very much. Today it's my pleasure to introduce to you ladies here and on the air also... A lovely young lady, as she's an RKO starter. She's currently appearing with Shirley Temple and Cary Grant and The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. And she is a very up-and-coming, very promising young starter. Someday you'll know her as well as we know any star on the screen. I'd like you to meet Miss Marilyn Mercer. Will you come up here, please, Miss Mercer? <laughs> hey, she, you are pretty. Oh, thank You're pretty, you. You should go a long way in pictures. Oh, thank you very much. You, I hope so. Good. Will you want to describe a way? Uh, yes, I do. She's a very charming bride, auburn-haired, and she's dressed in a gown of white lace and tulle, and it has a sweetheart neckline with a yoke of neck, and a fitted bodice of lace ending in a peplum, a peplum over a, a very full tulle skirt with about three-yard train, and uh, the sleeves are long and fitted, ending in points over the hand, and she has a fingertip veil held by a heart-shaped tiara of lace, outlined in seed pearls. Mm -hmm. And uh, the matron of honor is, is dressed in a pink lace and tulle with pink flowers in her hair, and the groom is a very nice-looking brunette dressed in a tuxedo. It's a very nice description. <laughs> very good job. Well, don't go away now. Don't go mad. 
I would like to know a couple of little things about you, if you don't mind. Uh, you mind telling me how old you are? Uh, 19. Mm, I thought very young. It's Miss, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you have any special boyfriends? No. No? No. I special. You're going to have like a... Don't play the field for a while. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then have your career. Career, career first. Very much mm-hmm. career, Mom. When do you think you'll be around to getting married, thinking about it? Oh, I don't know. I really haven't... I'm just waiting until the time comes, and then I'll be ready. Yes. <laughs> that could be soon. Yeah. I, I want to thank you very much for doing a very nice job. Is that your first picture of the Bobby Soxer? That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. The first one? Have you first been under one. contract to Archie alone? Uh, since February. I see. Well, they must have some plans for you. Well, I, I hope so. Sure. It's a wonderful studio. I love it. They're very nice people over there. Very I know a couple nice. Of characters named Perry Lieber and <laughs> Bill Livingston and Frank Parker over there. Mm, they're wonderful. Mm-hmm. Everybody's been wonderful. Thank you very much, and good luck to you in your career. Miss Murphy. <laughs> so a lot of our listeners have written in the last few days to say how much they enjoyed the picture story in the current issue of Look Magazine on the honeymoon of one of our bride and groom couples. We're pretty proud of our bride and groom honeymoons, and even though this was a special honeymoon arranged by Look, it shows our honeymooners at several of the beautiful hotels we send couples, such as the Del Monte Lodge at Pebble Beach, Last Frontier in Las Vegas, and other beautiful spots. I know you listeners who've written in for pictures for our honeymoon spots will enjoy particularly this issue of Look, are there ten, as there are ten pages of beautiful pictures of our honeymooning couples. Say, speaking of honeymooning couples today, uh, we, by a strange coincidence, not so strange, we have three of them here. Where are you folks who've been married a very short time? There's one, two, three, four. Over here, I see. You are? This is E.D. Schaefer, Chicago, Illinois. And this is the? Edward Schaefer. Schaefer. How long been married? About 13 days. 13 days. I, that's lucky, though, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. You betcha. And uh, let's see, you folks here are? Uh, Mrs. Lou Daratani from Detroit, Michigan. Gee, what a glance you gave him. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been married? Uh, Ten days. Ten days, I see. And over here, holding hands like mad over here, <laughs> not listening to a word that anybody says. You are? This is Fred W. Stone, San and, Diego, California. And this is Mr. Stone. That's correct. And how long have you been married, Mr. Stone? Uh, fifth, uh, 67 hours and 52 minutes. <laughs> well, I don't blame him for not listening. <laughs> well, you know, young people who have been married a very short time like this uh, sometimes have very good ideas on marriages, and I would like to ask you, raise a little question. You may or may not be aware of it, but sooner or later you will be aware of the fact that in every family, there's some one person, either the husband or the wife, who takes the lead in making most decisions, financial or otherwise, whatever they may be. And judging from your own limited experience and being aware of the problem now, I'd like to ask you, if you will, please, to sort of tell me who you think is going to wear the pants in the family up here, the, the one you saw today, the young folks that married 13 days My here. My husband. Your husband will, will wear them in your family. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, who do you think is going to, uh, of the bride and groom? The groom. Mm-hmm. And You? I think the groom should. You think the groom should? Who do you think is going to? Uh, the groom. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you? I'm positive the groom will. Mm-hmm. That's ten days married, and you? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the groom will. Well, we'll ask these folks to marry here 67 hours. I think we're both going to. You're both going to? <laughs> well, that's what being married three days or two days is for you. <laughs> Who do you think is going to wear the pants in the bride and groom family up here, the one you just saw today? I think the groom will. You think the groom will? Oh, I believe so, but she she claims she's going to be the boss because the toe next to her big toe is longer than her big toe. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think we'll go into that right now. Coming back to the chapel, very less than a minute, our very happy young bride and groom. Congratulations, Ray. Would you step over here? If you step right over here, I have some lovely gifts for you, and I want you to see them. What, Jack? John, since they met in the bowling alley, I have a bowling ball for the groom. It has a chain on it, of course. Oh, fine. We have for you folks here your beautiful silver. It's sterling from Gorham, of course. Since 1831, the aristocrat of American silver, of sterling all over, too, all over the world. Uh, Gorham is so famous for their beautiful patterns, and each day they present our bride and groom their choice of five of them. There's King Edward, Sovereign, a Greenbrier, Old French and English Cadroon, complete service for four, 24 pieces of Gorham Sterling. Here from Max Factor is a makeup kit, just as designed for the stars of Hollywood, presented to our bride and groom. Very lovely indeed. For the groom to take on the honeymoon, a camera, a very beautiful Argo Flex, the finest made by the Argus Camera Company. Reflex action, you can see the pictures you take it, and a year's supply of and can film. From Skyway, your luggage, 
Very beautiful luggage it is, too. This is the Skyway Victoria. Very beautiful indeed. That for the groom is the very famous commuter. You've seen the Skyway luggage advertised in the famous magazines. Here's your wedding album. This from Bernard of Hollywood in Palm Springs with formal portraits and candid shots of everything that took place here today. And also, Capitol Records of Hollywood, who record your favorite artists, have recorded every word said on this program, including the proposal. And you'll have a talking picture in that special album. We uh, have a, this, this is a, uh, from the radio division of the Bendix Aviation Corporation, smartly streamlined plastic radio so you can hear bright and groom wherever you may be. Our sponsor has a brand new product. It's called Philips Skin Cream and Philips Cleansing Cream. We present it to our bride to help you keep that youthful radiance and beauty that you have today. And for your home, since you can both cook, here's the new 1947 Clappen gas range. This is indeed a beauty with the, uh, it's the range of exclusive features you can see with a glass window and the uh, oven door. There's the serve your trays and tell you set and oh so many things. Exclusive features. Well, keep your mind on what we're doing over here, will you? <laughs> ah, this Clappen will be a beauty in your home. But now for the uh, talking about your honeymoon, which is the next thing on the docket. Waiting outside is a Tanner Motor Livery Limousine with uniformed chauffeur waiting to drive you to Los Angeles Municipal Airport. We'll board a special Western Airlines plane for a flight north along the Pacific Ocean to the Honeymooners Paradise. At the Salinas Airport, you'll be met by a limousine from the Gray Line Company of Monterey, which will drive you to your honeymoon destination, the beautiful Rio Del Mar Hotel, situated on the cliffs of Monterey Bay, just 85 miles south of San Francisco. The Rio Del Mar is justly famous for its beauty, its spacious grounds, and its luxurious accommodations. The attractive beach club located on the shores of Monterey Bay will be at your disposal, and there's dinner dancing nightly in the lovely uh, desert room overlooking the beautiful historic bay. You'll occupy the bridal suite, of course, naturally, and manager Morton Hart, a very fine host, will demonstrate for you the hospitality for which the Rio Del Mar is so widely known. And when your honeymoon is over, you'll be flown back to Hollywood by Western Airlines. Incidentally, we have three young couples here uh, married a very short time on honeymoon, and we ask them who's going to wear the pants in your family. And before I tell you what they said... I want to invite all of you to be our guests tonight at the beautiful Zephyr Room out here of the Chapman Park Hotel. Uh, wonderful, intimate entertainment. I believe White Fist, a very famous entertainer, is opening there tonight. But there's, you'll have champagne, cocktails, and steaks and stuff that you like, and from there on your. But they all said that you were going to wear the pants in the family. However, they've been married 13 days, 10 days, and three days. I've been married five years. Jack, how long have you been married? Eight years. So between the two of us, with our 13 years, we overruled them. However, here are the pants for you to wear in your family. <laughs> A pair of beautiful satin silk old-fashioned paddles. Right now, it's good luck to our bride and groom as they leave on their honeymoon and all good wishes for a long, happy married life. See the rest of you folks tomorrow. How do you feel today? Do you feel any of the discomforts of acid indigestion coming on? Heartburn, headachey, upset feeling? If you do, remember that Philips Milk of Magnesia relieves the discomforts of acid indigestion almost at once. So when you want to soothe and settle an upset stomach, take Philips Milk of Magnesia. The wonderful relief you get will prove to you why Philips is rated among the fastest, most effective neutralizers of stomach acids known. At nighttime, Philips relieves the discomforts of acid indigestion that make you toss and turn. You sleep soundly. What's more, when necessary, taken at bedtime in water, two to four tablespoonfuls of Philips Milk of Magnesia will help you to start the day feeling bright and cheerful. Caution, use only as directed. So buy Phillips, ask for it by its full name, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, Milk of Magnesia. Not for Milk of Magnesia alone. Today, get Phillips Milk of Magnesia at any drugstore. We know that many of you are planning to see Bride and Groom on your visit to California. Be sure and write in advance four tickets to Bride and Groom, Hollywood 28, California. Jack McElroy speaking. Bride and groom with John Nelson comes to you every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time from Hollywood. Relieve painful cold sores, fever blisters, minor cuts and burns, scratches with Campophonique. It contains a mild surface anesthetic to help stop pain. Also combats infection. Get Campol Phonique, famous liquid antiseptic dressing from druggist. Use as directed. Campol Phonique, spelled C-A-M-P-H-O-P-H-E-N-I-Q-U-E. Campol Phonique. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 